And now it's time for development debates. We dig deeper into some of the questions shaping the future and present of China. Today, we'll see two Chinese experts debating if the government's GDP target will affect economic reforms. Chinese Premier Li Keqiang spoke about the government's work report during the two sessions as an economic goal of that year. The Premier said that the GDP growth rate this year will be maintained at around 7.5 percent. Meanwhile, the government should keep CPI below 3.5 percent. Last year, China's GDP reached 56.9 trillion yuan, or around 9.3 trillion U.S. dollars. If China can meet the government's goal of 7.5 percent increase, then the country's GDP would exceed 10 trillion dollars by the end of this year. However, many experts believe the 7.5 percent GDP increase is too high. Considering the central government's strong willingness to rebalance China's economic structure, experts believe that a 7% GDP increase would be reasonable. So what are the problems with trying to reach that goal? The chief strategist of the U.S.-based Silvercrest Asset Management Group, Patrick Chauvinek, told German press that the 7.5% GDP growth target would make it hard to reform the economy. Patrick believes that economic reforms in deep water zones would unavoidably slow down China's economic development. However, from a long-term perspective, this move was necessary. Patrick argues that setting a high GDP goal is almost the same thing as promoting false economic prosperity. Patrick says this would continue to aggravate the country's biggest problems. Those are bad loans, reliance on investment, and overcapacity. Patrick Chauvinek mentions the government can only achieve the 7.5% GDP goal if it implements a loose monetary policy. However, this would bring more risk to the country's financial system. Patrick said that since the 2008 financial crisis, the government has let the debt ratio go from 150 to 210 percent. Most money has been invested into low efficiency projects or overcapacity in industries. Patrick said by the end of last year, China's bad loans have reached their highest level since 2008. He also warns that there would be over 1 trillion yuan in government debt this year. Many of them have to be repaid through new bank loans. Therefore, Patrick Chauvinek believes that the 7.5 percent GDP target would damage the new leadership's efforts at economic reforms. However, economist Li Nifu doesn't support Patrick Chauvinek's idea. Li told Chinese media during the two sessions that China still has a lot of room for effective investments. Li says this could easily keep the country's GDP growth rate between 7.5 and 8 percent in the next few years. Li points out that the sluggish economy in developed countries has dragged down China's exports. The foreign capital investment in China also hasn't made much of a rebound. Only the domestic consumption market has developed quite well. However, Li says China's economic development shouldn't rely too much on domestic consumption. Lin says that China's income levels are too low. People might use their bank savings for consumption at the beginning. But after that, they need to raise their debt to maintain consumption. Lin says the crisis would come when people cannot afford to pay off their interest. Therefore, Lin suggests that China still needs to rely on investment to keep up its economic development. Lin says currently infrastructure in Chinese cities still lacks development. Investing in this field would keep its GDP growth rate above 7.5%. It would have no effect on the government's economic reform scheme. Slowing down the current pace could benefit the country's economy from a long-term perspective. Currently, the economy is heavily reliant on shadow banking, investment, and exports. If the country wants to change its economic structure, it needs to diversify from the real estate and manufacturing industries. Those are also the country's strong points, so they likely won't be abandoned anytime soon.